Good morning, everybody. My name is Juan Travesi. I'm a consultant engineer, as Anita already explained. And I'm going to talk about um, um, some courses that we have done in Spain um, within the ProfTrack project. Those courses are very interesting in the way that uh, we are working with a very interdisciplinary professional group. What is the idea? The type of profiles we are working with are architects, MEP engineers, so mechanical, electrical, and plumbing engineers, construction manager, uh, which in Spain is the profession, is the people that is responsible of the construction process during the building process, okay? Uh, so they are responsible of the quality, okay, of the building, and the decision makers. We group on this what we call uh, every financial and or economical responsible people. What is the idea? Uh, we want to work. Uh, what we want to help people is to be able to design a near zero energy building. So our idea is that we have to follow different topics and different professions. We have to focus on different professions. We are going to work with demand reduction in the way of architect way of thinking, so bioclimatic solutions. The second topic is consumption reduction on the uh, MEP installations, so uh, lighting, HVAC, and so on. Third topic is about uh, renewable energy generation on site, on the building. All this has to be analyzed inside the cost analysis and the return of investment of the building on the, on the investment. And this is going to be worked together in interdisciplinary workshops. So the idea is to, all these groups are going to be teached on the four topics with the final idea of an uh, interdisciplinary workshop where all of them will work together in a real design on a top of few exercises. Well, this slide is about the last, uh, last course we have done in Spain. This course was between uh, September 25th and uh, November 6th. As you can see, uh, it's uh, one month and a half, but only 36 hours on the on the classroom. Okay, but people is going to, is working on their own. The student profiles we have had. Well, uh, for this, please excuse me. Uh, see the price was 670 euros, and it was supported by the Madrid regional government. The student profiles we have had was about uh, 20 people, 12 architects, six MEP engineers, and two construction managers. This is about this course. In previous courses we have had, uh, the profiles we had was 30 people. The number of people was 30 and we were able to manage to have 10 of each of them. The professions we had, of course, uh, we had seven decision makers. We are very happy with that because uh, in previous courses, we were not able to contact them so, so much, okay? In this case, we have up to seven decision makers in a group of 20, 11 designers, uh, talking about both architects and engineers, and two equipment manufacturers. And it's interesting for us to, foc to highlight that uh, the students, let's say students, and they are not students, they are experienced people, they are professionals. As you can see on these pictures, you can see that they are not young people, okay? They are experienced people.
how was the course? Okay, the first day, it was just a brief introduction to the course. Uh, we introduced the NSEP concept and uh, define how is the, and explain how is the definition of this type of buildings worldwide, not only in Europe, but mainly in Europe, of course. And we create what we uh, call the teams. We are going to have <clears throat> different teams for the next exercises and the workshops. We tried to have in every team at least one architect, one engineer, one uh, construction manager, and one decision maker. Um, second day, we focused on the bioclimatic solutions and architectural solutions in order to reduce thermal and lighting demand. We explain also how is the build, the Spanish building code that is being reviewed, of course, and is, uh, we were explaining briefly what were the main ideas for the building code. See that the people that is following this session is all the attendees, I mean the architects plus the engineer plus the construction manager plus the decision makers. So um, the level we had, I mean the, the, the detail we had is not probably as detailed as architects know, but is good enough for engineers, construction managers and decision makers. The idea is to try to make them understandable each other so they can understand each other people on next sessions. With the same idea, we did the third and the fourth days. The third day was focused on, let's say, conventional solutions, but energy efficient. So HVAC and lighting solutions and uh, topics like uh, heat pumps, geothermal, uh, LED lighting, and so on, or explain it. <clears throat> the fourth day was about renewable energy in buildings. Um, the main topics here were about solar thermal and PV, and some about uh, wind power solutions. After those, See the dates, they were quite fast between September 25th and October 9th. We start with the workshops. Between, uh, between all these sessions, we uh, gave people some bibliography, so if they want to get deeper on the solutions, they were able to do it, okay? When we are on October 5th, we start with the workshops. See that we are talking about eight hours workshop for October 5th. Uh, the idea, it has two different parts. On the morning, we focus on workshops with different, let's say, simple cases and exercises. Okay, so we explain some problem or some building case and uh, they work each other within their teams and try to find a solution and propose it. Uh, the, the exercises were about half an hour, each of them, and after this half an hour, every group share their solution with the others, and we have some discussion and round table. So the students and the groups learn from other teams and other solutions. They start understanding other architects other engineers, other decision makers, other construction managers. After this morning, that uh, the attendees were really happy and interested about it, um, we start with the, what we call the final exercise work. What is this? <clears throat> we define two cases. We have studied two cases, office buildings and dwelling. Uh, not single families houses, okay? It's a building, it's around, I think it's 36 houses inside, 36 apartments. Um, and the, um, 
as we have in Spain, several different uh, climates. We placed the weather I and mean, in the buildings on three different climates, and each team works in a different case. So, for example, for office building, we have three different climates. Each climate is analyzed by a separate team. Okay. So, for example, one team will analyze office building on Valencia, which is a very Mediterranean uh, weather. And other team will uh, analyze, for example, Madrid, which is continental weather. Okay. So the solutions are going to be different, really different, depending on the case and the building. I mean, and the weather. This uh, on the afternoon on the October fifth, they work on their teams, and uh, the teachers uh, are moving from one table to other, just helping them to. Uh, to try to, let's say, lubricate their work. On October 6th, there's a um, three-hour session where the cost calculation is explained. Okay, life cycle, so, uh, life cycle cost and return of investment and so on. <clears throat> Uh, I said, sorry, I said October 6th is October 16th. Okay? So between uh, day five and day six, they have one week. They they were working by their own. So on the October 6th, uh, 16th, uh, they could ask questions to the teachers, answer their opinion. One week later, between 16th and 23rd, uh, they keep on working by their own and get back to the class. And we do a very interesting exercise on the morning, which is changing the buildings. So, for example, if somebody has work in the office building in Madrid, he was work. He he's going to work. This team is going to work on the dwelling in, let's say, Burgos, for example, which is which is a very cold weather. What, what is the idea with this is try to work on a different case and think on different solutions and learn about the other building, other cases and other buildings. Because on the afternoon, every team has a short presentation of their solution, of their solution and explain what they have proposed. Um, this presentation is quite short, it's only 10 minutes. And after these 10 minutes, uh, there's a round table, case by case, and uh, other teams um, ask or suggest new solutions. Because the idea is that people have 15 days, 15 extra days, for the final work presentations after uh, considering or not the suggestions on this uh, 23rd October workshop. The final day is uh, November was November sixth. Uh, it's a three-hour session with the final work presentations, and uh, what we think is a very interesting topic is uh, do the skill mapping. We made the skill mapping with the people that has been working on the on the session in order to help them to do their own roadmap to learn what is their skill level in each topic and uh, be able to create their own roadmap for self-learning. Okay. Uh, the main comments about this course uh, the attendees did were, first of all, they were really interested about the interdisciplinary workshops, which is a new way of teaching and learning. The, diff the main difference is that they are learning by their own and learning from each other. For example, the architect is sharing their knowledge uh, with his MEP engineer in their team, for example. Uh, the main claiming by attendees was about uh, the theoretical part uh, that seems to be not enough for non-experts. Uh, we are planning to change this part and 
uh, get closer to other countries' solution, for example, the Netherlands, they are uh, on, on the theoretical part, they are creating webinar courses for people to learn other specialist skills. Okay. For example, uh, engineers will have some webinars to learn about insulation or glass or sailing and so on. <clears throat> and the third lesson learned is about the buildings. Uh, on next courses, we think we are going to change the buildings because as these buildings we have considered are real buildings and not theoretical, they have very specific problems and in some cases uh, they are not so usable for teaching. Uh, we are working on creating a more theoretical building in order to um, be open to every type of solution by the attendees and the students. So more or less that's what we have learned from these Prof Track projects.